Happy Valentine's Day and good morning, KU. I'm Brett Ivey. And I'm Jill Bainbridge. Like Brett said, happy Valentine's mm -hmm. Day. Today is Friday, February 14th. We hope you have some special plans with your loved one. Mm -hmm. You know, Brett Ivey, our, my <laughs> very own co-host, has some very special plans. Brett, let's hear. That's right. I uh, plan on taking out my lovely girlfriend, Jamie Bouchard, out to dinner tonight. I can't really tell you where because, you know, I'm a hopeless romantic and I got to keep it a secret. She's Girl's tuning in right now. There she is right there. Um, Jamie. And so, yeah. And so I'm very excited. I think it's going to be a pretty good time tonight, but we'll see. Good. Well, well, congrats on not being single well, on thank, this Valentine's Day. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, on the other hand, um, single and pretty, pretty happy about it. I'm <laughs> going to hang out with some of my girlfriends tonight. We're going to go see a romantic comedy, ball our eyes out, and eat a lot of chocolate. So. That sounds like my, like, every single day, so that's perfect. Wow. That's really uh, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, even though you're single, Jill, you know, I might have someone in uh, for you. So oh. my, my roommate and good friend Keaton Prather put up a resume on Facebook the other day for uh, for his Valentine's Day plans. You can see it right there. And so he, um, you know, it's pretty great. He has, he has great qualifications. Like, he has a Netflix account. And he also like enjoys oh, watching perfect. Disney movies. Uh, he can also he's also very fluent in English and sorority speak, so he's totes adorbs. Hashtag perf. So excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> was that number one six two zero date me? That was that was. Uh, okay. You may call that number. It may not go through, but you have to find out for yourself. So we'll, well see what you know that that might be an option. But you know what? <laughs> I, I kind of have somebody else special, near and dear to my heart. His name. It's a, it's an interesting story. Stay okay. with me. His I name gotcha. is Carlos. Carlos is from the Dominican Republic. We met him on vacation with my family. He was working. <laughs> there. Um, he's actually one of the towel boys. That's a picture of him right there on the right and those are my parents on the left. Um, so sending a special Valentine's Day shout out to my Valentine Carlos, you know, some thousand miles away in the Dominican mm -hmm. Republic. Yeah, well, you know, uh, you did meet him on trip with your parents, but speaking of your parents, mm -hmm. you know, there was a story in the UDK today about how students need to connect with their parents during school and even after they graduate. You read that, Jill. What do you think about the you story? You know, it's kind of an interesting story. It's a little bit twisted, the fact that some students think that the only reason to stay connected with your parents is because they know the statistics. <laughs> One third of college grads end up moving back home with their parents. So they know if they burn that bridge right now while they're in college, they're not going to have a place to stay when they graduate and can't find a job. So I, I don't know. I like to stay connected with my parents <laughs> just because I like to stay connected with them. What about you? That's very true. You know, and uh, I, I, call, I consider myself a definitive mama's boy. You know, I call my mom every single day, love her to death. Uh, and, you know, I think. I think I think I'll have good family connections even after I graduate if I ever need a couch to stay on or anything like that. Oh, that's so sweet. I think we're good. But you know uh, what's really cool is my my mom and my brother are coming up to the game tomorrow where KU oh. faces TCU. So yep. and I'm really excited about that. Three o'clock. We are playing TCU. We're pretty excited about it. Hopefully it shouldn't be too difficult of a game. I don't want to jinx it, but they are 0 and 11 in conference play. So so hopefully we have a good chance there. It's true. I mean you never know. I mean they, we are rebounding from that loss against K State, which a lot of people. People are upset about, but personally, you know, it's a young team. They yeah. need to face these losses on the road. So we'll see what happens there. But, you know, I bet they'll be coming out strong against TCU. Hopefully we can pick up the W, especially for me, because I don't right. want my brother and my mom to come <laughs> for a bad game at the field house. Yeah, those so. are expensive tickets. And, you yeah. know, I did read somewhere that our losses this year are kind of paralleling with the losses that we had in the 2008 mm -hmm. season. So I don't know, maybe it's good luck. Maybe we're supposed to lose these games so we can win the only game that matters. Definitely, I think so. I mean, that was obviously a much older team in 2008. They know how to deal with adversity a little bit more, but hey, you never know. We'll see yeah. what happens. So anyway, Jill, who do you have coming up next in the interview segment? Our very own director of Good Morning KU, Katie, will be here with me after the break, so stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Good Morning KU. I am Jill Bainbridge and I am here with Katie Barrett. Katie, how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Oh, thank you. So Katie is our very own director here at Good Morning KU. And actually, before the show, Katie and I were talking about moving back in with your parents, that story that we just covered a few minutes ago. And Katie actually is doing pretty much the opposite of moving back <laughs> in with her parents. Katie, what are you doing when you graduate? Um, well, on May 31st, which is a week, after, a week and a half after graduation, I'm going to be moving to Buenos Aires. Argentina wow. to teach English. So I'm going to buy a one-way ticket um, today, this afternoon actually, to teach English. So. Congratulations on Thank that. You. That is incredible. How do you find those kind of opportunities? Um, I always knew that I wanted to help people and travel. And I looked into the Peace Corps. It just didn't seem right for me. Uh, okay. It sounded very scary. And so I found a program called Language Corps just by Googling teach English in Argentina. Okay. And it seemed very doable and affordable and not as scary as the Peace Corps. It okay. seemed more friendly, I guess. Okay, so what mm. are the specifics of, do you know, like, 
where you're living, who you're living with, what, what you'll be doing day to day? Um, it's kind of exciting. I'm going to be living with a host family. The way that Language Corps works is you get certified in country. Okay. So I'm going to fly down on the 31st and start training on June 2nd. So okay. I'm going to be staying with the host family for the month of June. Fun. And then I'm on my own to find an apartment in Buenos Aires. Oh my but, gosh. but I've been spending a lot of time on Craigslist, Buenos Aires, looking at apartments, and they are all just stunning. They're all gorgeous, so I can't wait. I did not wait. know that was a thing. Craigslist, Buenos Aires. Yeah. Who known? <laughs> so, so how long are you planning on being there? Do you know? Or are you just going to go and see wherever the wind takes you? They ask you to commit to a year, which I can totally do. I know some of my friends, one of my friends is teaching English in China through the same okay. program and he decided to stay a second year. He loved it so much. So we'll see. Definitely sticking around for a year. Um, okay. Who knows after that? Yeah. So why, why South America? Why Buenos Aires? What draws you to that? Because we were talking earlier and I feel like everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people are very like Europe focused or Asia focused, but I hear very little of people going to South America. Yeah. I feel like there's a big romantic appeal with Europe and like Paris and everything, but my big pull with South America and Argentina specifically is I love Spanish. I've taken Spanish for six years in high school. I've traveled a lot in Central America and I'm just really drawn to like the uh, warmth of the people there and Argentina specifically because they have this gorgeous fusion of Spanish and Latin American and I Italian culture and there's a lot of diverse neighborhoods. Um, I've just had this really intense love affair with Argentina okay. since fifth grade maybe. I remember in fifth grade, I brought um, a poster of Argentina to like tell about me. It was like okay. one of the first days of school. Like, what do we need to know about you? I was like, I love Argentina. Like little fifth grade Katie with my big oh. eyeballs. Like, so I don't know. Okay. My teacher was probably like, what is this kid doing? But <laughs> so I'm assuming you're fairly fluent in Spanish. I like to think I'm fluent. I definitely have lost some of my language skills. I haven't taken a class since freshman year of college, but. Um, I still dream in Spanish sometimes, which is a big indicator of fluency. Yeah. Oh yeah. I listen to a lot of reggaeton, um, Daddy, okay. Daddy Janky and stuff. So. So yeah. I know I'm throwing this on you. Would you be willing to take us to break in Spanish? Tell everybody we'll be back with your news with Michael and Sam. Oh, I'll try. Adios. Okay. Adios, mis amigos. Estás vistiendo a Good Morning KU y el próximo es Michael y Sam. If I had a superpower, what would it be? The ability to make things levitate. The ability to read other people's minds. To be able to hold my breath underwater for a long time. Um, I would talk to the animals. I could turn water into snow. Or you could just give blood. Hi, I'm Sam. And I'm Michael. This is your Good Morning KU News Update. The Mount Kailud volcano in Indonesia erupted yesterday, blasting ash and debris across and killing two people thus far. Over 100,000 people are being evacuated and six airports have closed. Russian President Vladimir Putin visited Team USA in Sochi today. According to the USA Today, he went to ease the tension that currently exists because of President Obama's choices regarding USA's representation at the Olympics. Obama made the decision to skip the Olympics himself and send three openly gay athletes in place of the Vice President and the First Lady. Copenhagen Zoo in Stockholm surprised people with their decision to kill a healthy giraffe in front of a crowd that held children. The giraffe was slaughtered and then fed to the lions. According to the Associated Press, this fate is quite normal. European zoos euthanize thousands of animals every year in order to preserve species. In the U.S., zoos are con use contraceptives to make sure the animals don't reproduce offspring. To celebrate Valentine's Day, a few McDonald's franchises are offering customers a high-class dining experience. The fast food chain is taking reservations and offering tables complete with roses, tablecloths, and candlelight. The participating McDonald's are located in Tampa, Florida, and North Carolina. In Olympic news, we are at the midpoint, and so far the U.S. is tied with the Netherlands for second place with a total of 12 medals. Norway is in first with 13. It's quite a close race for the top spot that the U.S. claimed in the 2010 Olympics with 37 total medals. The highlights of the Olympics so far include Jamie Anderson, who won gold for the U.S. in the first ever women's slope-style event. The U.S. got three gold medals in snowboarding as well. 
The biggest disappointment of the games has to be Sean White's inability to medal. He won gold in the halfpipe in 2006 and 2010 games. He has had an incredible Olympic career, but medaling in three straight Olympics would have been pretty impressive. And that's it for the Olympic update. And don't forget the <coughs> basketball game tomorrow afternoon at 3 p.m. The Jayhawks will take on TCU and Allen Fieldhouse. That wraps it up for the news, but quickly, we have a couple shout-outs to do. Happy Valentine's Day to Katie Rudolph. And happy Valentine's Day to Jeff Ray. Stay tuned, and after the break, we'll be back with Jill and Brett. Hello and welcome back. You know, Jill, we just were talking about the game mm -hmm. over the break, and uh, you said you won't be able to make it this one. Why is that? I won't. I'm pretty devastated about it, but it's okay. <laughs> um, it's for a good cause. I actually participate in Rock Chalk Review. You guys might have heard of it before. It's it's a really cool thing. It's five sorority and fraternity pairs that do each about a 15-minute musical skit kind of thing, and it raises thousands and thousands of dollars for Big Brothers Big Sisters mm -hmm. here in Douglas County, which is a really incredible cause. So it's a lot of practice time. It's about it's about an hour a day and a couple hours every day on the weekend. Um, but I'm getting to know my cast very well mm -hmm. and my directors very well. And knowing that it's all for Big Brothers Big Sisters really makes it worth it. It's a great time. That's great. You know, and as we near that event, we're definitely going to be hear, hearing a lot more about that. Be, uh, be, we'll be sure to get guests on and maybe mm -hmm. even a performance in the future. So, Absolutely. So when's the date on that, Jill? Um, it is, I believe, March 6th, 7th, and 8th, somewhere in that weekend. It's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday show. So it is coming up. It's pretty soon. So yeah, hope, hope you're coming. Oh, definitely. Most definitely. And I think that's going to do it for us today. So we hope you have a uh, happy Valentine's. Day. I'm Brett Ivy. And I'm Jill Bainbridge. Have a great day. <laughs>